welcome back to the Witchy Web We Weave. I'm Alara. I'm Alex. And this is Al. <laughs> and that's Boo. Oh, that's Boo. <laughs> the white stuff over there. Come on, you gotta be up here. You gotta relax. Alright, so today is uh, part two of, well, sort of part two. We're... It's a continuation. Mm-hmm. So we did another video with, it was kind of to go with our Check Your Pantry video, but this one is another Check Your Garden video. Or just um, Check Gardens. Yeah. I mean, I would be wary of stealing your neighbor's garden stuff, but you do you. Uh, I did end up stealing a bunch of lemons from a friend on accident. So, uh, you do you. <laughs> didn't realize it was my friend till way after the fact. On accident, huh? I mean, I stole them on purpose, <laughs> didn't realize it was my friend though. So, from my friend on accident, stole them on purpose. There you go. <laughs> anyway, so last time we kind of did too many, so we're, we're cutting it off at three today. And we're just gonna jump right in. Right. So the first one is the long one, chrysanthemum. Which, like I told her earlier, I didn't realize that moms were chrysanthemums. I never made that connection. I thought moms were their own flower. Which, with chrysanthemums, I was actually kind of excited because here in the States, I don't know about anywhere else in the world, but here in the States, we have a thing when it gets around prom season. It's apparently a Texas only thing. Is it really a Texas only thing? It is in certain schools in Oklahoma and Louisiana. Okay, because we have it in Arkansas. Here, and it's mostly here. And most of the other country does not know what the heck home Okay, because Arkansas used to do them too. And they, oh. were pretty, they were pretty excessive. So yeah. maybe we should explain what a mom is, What a prom or homecoming mom is. Yeah, so and we'll insert pictures just so y'all can see the ridiculousness. A thing. A mum is a fake mum, plastic or whatever fake flower is made out of, and then you embellish it ridiculously. Ribbons, trinkets, bells, bears. charms, bears. I've seen full size teddy bears glued on one of those. Yep. Um, and these are things you're supposed to be able to wear, by the way. So eventually, it was like this big on some of these girls. Just to kind of explain, when this kind of thing was kind of a thing it started out being an, an actual, actual mom because we were big. looking up like where did this start why does texas have such a random tradition embellished with just a few ribbons and then it grew bigger and bigger and bigger and when i was in, in arkansas texas. when it came to homecoming moms there were a few girls walking around school with moms so big that they had to have a harness yes. to hold them up and support the weight because they started it off by just having it as a necklace, mm -hmm. and it would put so much strain. I had one of those one year. It would put so much strain on your neck or on your shoulders that they actually had to have it made into a harness. And it was, you know, yay big. Yeah. And this whole thing is supposed to be, traditionally I thought mumps were given by your date that was taking you to homecoming. It's supposed to be. But nowadays, with the big, oversized, you know, outrageous moms, those are normally made by the the girls oh. instead of by really where I'm from. It wasn't like that here. It was still like because normally you made them at home with you and your mom. For, oh, like... and then your date would instead of buying you the huge one, would give you a more demure simple subtle one that you would just wear on your on your wrist oh yeah see in california we had corsages but that was for prom and that was just a very basic here it's a flower so anyway, and there were natural flowers it's too. supposed to be it traditionally it's supposed to be something that your date to the which homecoming i don't think is a thing in other in other countries too most of those dances i don't think are a thing okay honestly homecoming is a celebration centered around football Hence why it started in Texas. Hence why it's a big thing here in the South. So, homecoming is supposed to be like the, what is it, the, the last home game of the season? Isn't it the first one? Or is it the first? I... I never followed football. American football. Same. So, with American football, it's to celebrate, like, the the home game, where you're actually, your your team plays at home, and it's either... The first one of the season, or it's the last one of the season, it's like the Sunday. last game that they play home, or the first season. Yeah, and typically, 
Because that game's typically on a Friday night. And there's so the normally... the dance yeah. is somewhere around either there's the There's normally the, the game on Friday night, night, and then there is a dance um, that is associated with that game. It's a big celebration. It's a big thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And I feel like moms kind of went to, like, because, I don't know, I guess girls just started doing it for whatever reason, but... I think it was kind of like the whole, like, when you go into prom or whatever, if y'all have those kind of dances, and it's like, who showed up in a limo, it's kind of like, uh... It's kind of a, it turned into a one-up thing. Yeah. It really did. Just who could have the biggest, most, was it ostentatious, the most gaudy, gaudy, god-awful thing. <laughs> it's kind of how I thought about it. I, I wasn't really big into all that. Um, I don't even think I had a date prom night. Yeah, same. Anyway, so, I thought that there would be some special reason or meaning why here in the South, we use chrysanthemums for mums for, you know, a celebration of that particular event. No, no, not really. The only reason, apparently, why they use chrysanthemums for this thing is because they were the only one of the few flowers in season during that time. Because it ha it normally happens in the fall. Mm -hmm. Like this is when homecoming is for us. It's in the fall. That's why I, I didn't think it was like the last game. Because... I just always thought it was ridiculous that we had an entire, ev you know, an entire and celebration then, around American. Football. Yeah, and I had I was in I was in Texas for a few years of all of that, and we had like homecoming week. Yeah, yeah, it was the whole thing. Yeah. Like there was a there was a pep rally or a sp spirit rally or a rah rah chant. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're gonna beat everybody else. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um. Anywho. So anyway. So a little tidbit from the south, though, because yeah. a lot of people aren't gonna get that yeah. part okay. of it. I don't think. Yeah, it's it's an embellishment for a very particular celebration that we have here. Yep. And. I was thinking that chrysanthemums were going to be used because they can be, like, I, I've always, uh, they can be associated with, like, as a symbol of strength, or um, they can be associated for symbolizing fidelity. That would have been a really good reason to use a chrysanthemum. No, it was just in season. Yeah. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I was gonna say because I think I was reading that chrysanthemums don't really smell all that much either. They so have a slight fragrance. Yeah, but it's but not, yeah, it's not like, overly. Potent. Yeah, it, it wasn't like a flower they picked because like roses or something. It wasn't like a very fragrant kind of which, flower. Yeah. Which, getting back to actual chrysanthemum, the actual flower, um, when we're talking about some of the um, some of the things associated with this particular flower, it's normally considered to be a masculine flower. And it's nor it is um, associated with the sun specifically, like the sun, and then it's associated with the element of fire. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. I I like just kind of like looking at little stuff here and there. If we mention anything medically, of course, do not take that as medical advice. Mm -hmm. Disclaimer. 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 Talk to your doctor. <laughs> take it your own risk. <laughs> um. Because I was kind of like reading about them because I was like, if it's a fall flower, like that must have had other kind of meanings to people back in the day when they, like everything else was dying and that was still a flower that was blooming. That must have been kind of like, what is this a little bit? And uh, apparently it was good for colds. Yeah. So um, I could see that everyone's, you know, fall's coming, you get more sick and it's a flower that's in season that you could yeah. take or um, brew or whatever. I've also seen and heard this flower like metaphysically being used um, for works dealing with mental health or for specifically like power hmm. so and I kind of I really do kind of understand because a lot of flowers that have elemental associations with the Sun and fire like those two things specifically they're normally really good um, for working with mental health for working with happiness spells for like think of a literal like the sun uplifting your mood or shiny you know you know brightening cloudy skies type thing so it kind of makes sense to me a little bit but 
when we're talking about like different spells or different workings, this traditionally, this particular flower, chrysanthemums, um, were thought to be really good against uh, protecting against evil spirits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was, I was gonna say that, and then it was good for repelling evil spirits, but also if you attract any kind of wayward spirit and you're not about it, it can also repel any kind of spirit that you don't want around you. But the other thing I thought was kind of interesting, and that's why I kind of grabbed my phone just quick for a second, was chrysanthemums are in the daisy family, and certain areas call chrysanthemums a type of marigold, because marigold is actually a much broader flower than I thought originally, because this is like the third flower I've, th I've read about that's called a marigold without us ever talking about the actual marigold. Right. So, but I was reading that these are used a lot in Samhain altars and in gravesite, you know, memorials or anything like that. But that was kind of interesting because if anyone's uh, seen... I actually have a re another reasoning tacked on to why they're used for gravesites and stuff like that. So Gotcha. You're going to that real quick. Okay. Um, traditionally, the reason why that is... A, the okay the, the case is the fact that um, chrysanthemums were thought to help ease the passage of recently deceased loved ones into the next life or into the See, afterlife. that ties in with what I'm about to say. This is great. So Sorry. if anyone's seen the movie Coco, I or <gasps> I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> shame. Um, but it's actually it's. It was a really well made movie and it's actually picks up on a lot of traditional Mexican folklore. Like they did a good job with it. And the flower they use for the other was muertos and stuff is Marigold. Oh. And the pathway to Shivalba and all this stuff is a pathway of Marigold petals. So there's like a scene in the movie where like to cross either way it's just like a field of petals of Marigold. It's not the flower, it's just petals everywhere. And then that's how they get back here for Day of the Dead to kind of celebrate their family, and that's how they get back. Well, nice. So, if chrysanthemums are kind of like marigolds in a spiritual sense and in an actual plant family sense, that kind of makes sense because they have a lot to do with the spirit realm. Yeah. So I'm like, that's kind of cool. Hey. Um, my last little note, I don't know if you had anything else, but marigold, oops, marigold, chrysanthemums do come in a variety of colors. So different colors will have color association based on them. We're not going to get into that again because we have other videos talking about that briefly. But it comes in different colors. So if you're trying to work with something a little more specific, mm -hmm. you can do that with chrysanthemums. And if you're wanting to use cuttings of live flowers and keep them in a vase or something, I just real quick mention that chrysanthemums actually apparently have a little bit of a longer base life. Um, where they will normally stay alive in a vase of water for about 20, 21 days. Hmm. So, just information that if you want to know it, it's there. I don't, I don't remember how I know that, but I know it. Anything else? Not for chrysanthemums. Moving on. So, we're also talking about sunflowers. Yeah, that was a pretty common flower, actually. <laughs> all, all three of our flowers for this particular video are flowers associated with the sun element. With the sun planetary. And that was not on purpose on my end. <laughs> I sent her a huge list of flowers. I just I was like, picked out Pick three some. and only afterwards did I realize that they were all associated with the sun. I was like, all right, well, we have our we have our theme. Go. Right? Um, so sunflowers, what you can do what can you do with them? Um dyes. Yeah. Because the petals are very potent yeah. in color. Um the thing a lot of people don't really associate with sunflowers besides the seeds you can eat the entire sunflower hmm. um it's you eat different parts of the sunflower in different stages we're not gonna get too crazy into that but like you can eat like if you're planting them yourself and then of course you can eat them only if you're not dousing them in pesticides and whatever so you can eat like the spring the if you're trying to like weed out your garden so they're not all overcrowded you can eat like the little baby plants and put them in a salad you can eat the heads if you kind of roast them at certain points in the life. So you can eat like the whole flower. Yeah, I've seen that. You can eat you can eat the petals at certain times. You can eat the stalk at other times. And I'm like, oh. I didn't know it was all edible. Normally, a plant has pieces that are edible, but all of them. Um, which actually, the whole thing with the seeds when you 
when you're working with sunflowers, their head, the head of the flower contains so many seeds, like mm -hmm. like hundred, like hundreds of seeds. And I think that's probably why sunflowers are really heavily associated with I, with prosperity. Mm -hmm. Like they have, a, they're very good for prosperity work or prosperity spells, and like. Um, thought so I'm just going to continue with a different thought <laughs> um, sunflowers are also apparently very good for fertility mm -hmm. for fertility spells and things like that um, but when you're looking at the traditional symbolism of just the flower in general not even going into like the uh, metaphysical correspondences the traditional symbolism of a sunflower is about happiness uh, it is a symbol uh, often of trying to convey an idea of loyalty or mm -hmm. adoration. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also commonly associated with symbolism of like pure thoughts, pure, pure love, pure devotion, pure adoration. Like not, not to make you <laughs> Not your impale thoughts. Which the whole um, symbol of happiness is also why it's very good for use in happiness spells along with the fact that it's also a sun element mm -hmm. and it is also associated with the element of fire so it is very good for lighting up your life mm -hmm. or lighting up you know your emotions your you know, everything um which actually this flower is also considered masculine as well which is funny because i'm gonna get into a story so i think it's a little bit of both oh really yeah um where the sunflower came from is actually very okay. ladylike but i'm gonna get into some other stuff real quick before i get into the oh. little myth behind it sorry yeah, i'm curious I'm gonna get to it. So it's good for all the things she said. It's really good for, like I said, prosperity. It's good for luck in general, also. Um, so truth, loyalty, honesty, fertility, sun energy, and I forget if it was a tribe. No, it was something like traditional magics that their symbol. Mm -hmm. There, there's symbol. There's the reason they use sunflower stuff was for joy and that I was reading this whole thing about how there was like very specific blends that you like don't get because it's very kept within their traditions that you would basically make a very specific sunflower oil. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And one of the recipes that I was reading was you would put sunflower in sunflower oil just to kind of like yeah, boost it basically. Um, in the last little bit, you were kind of mentioning like mental health and all this stuff, and I was reading that it was really good for grief. Mm -hmm. So kind of like that whole joy, happiness kind of thing. Sunflowers are also supposed to be good about um, protecting against negative energy. And I can see that. I've seen it also talked about in regards to money magic. Yeah, yeah, because prosperity, fortune. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. Um, so the myth, the Greek myth, oh. is. There's some little twinges on how it actually came about, but basically, this lady was in love with Apollo. She was immortal. And he was like, not having it. He was not about it. No? Yeah, one of the times that he was not about it, right? Because a lot of times gods didn't really care, whatever, right? No, I mean. And, uh, so, and so she would basically just watch him all day in the sun. Like, she would just follow him oh. through the sky, and he was like, well, fine. And there's two ways the myth ends. And one, he like shazammed her with like a lightning bolt or something and she turned into a sunflower. Oh. And then the other one, the other gods turned into a sunflower out of some kind of pity or something. I'm not sure oh. where that kind of came from. But hence the reason why I had read this before, but I didn't realize it was actually a thing. But sunflowers follow the rotation of the sun. Yes. So they look in the east in the morning, they look in the west in the evening, and because she's what still following him through the sky though is kind of the, oh. the myth behind it so that's why i was like if she's a lady i can see it being also kind of lady energy <laughs> also i love that little jiggle that you did <laughs> lady <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but yeah so i can see where it's kind of like leo fire like haha but i can see where it's also like lady okay I, yeah i can see that now and then i have like a friend in California where like her flower was the sunflower like that was what she wanted as like bouquets and stuff like that was her thing and then it's really funny because one of my aunts is like deathly allergic to sunflowers oh yeah well, dang sunflower oil seeds flower 
none of it. Which kind of sucked when they went to, oh, sunflower seed is health, like, oil is healthier, and they put it in everything. You basically oh, can't eat anything no. now. <laughs> and I was like, damn. That kind of sucks. Yep. All right. Last one? Moving on? All right. Chamomile. Or, as I was corrected, chamomile. Because, <laughs> story time, real quick. Well, I was in London, and I really wanted some tea, but I wasn't really into, like, black tea, Earl Grey tea, that kind of stuff. So I was trying to order chamomile tea. This poor lady, our waitress looked over, and she goes, what kind of tea? And I was like, chamomile? Like, I like I had never heard it said any other way, and the only other way I knew how to say it was in Spanish, and that was going to get me nowhere. <laughs> um, I, like, I could just see manzanilla. She would have been like, <laughs> so I was like, I was like, it's, it's like light. Wait, isn't manzana like apple? But it's apple. manzanilla. Oh, that's. It's not the manzana. It's manzanilla. Okay. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, it sounds like apple, but it's not apple. Um, apparently, because chamomile is supposed to smell like apple. Well, um, folk other folk names for chamomile um, include ground apple or earth apple. Well, there you go. That's probably why it's manzanilla. Anyway, so this waitress just sits there for like a good minute and then she goes, did you mean chamomile? And I was like, yes. (laughs) And I was just so embarrassed. I was like, because I was with my friend, he went with me and I just looked at him and he goes, dude, you should just give it up. And I was like, but I wanted tea. So yeah, there's my story (laughs) and that's how... uh, if no one knows what you're saying, try it, try it with a different accent. You might get somewhere with it. Anywho. Different pronunciation. Yeah. So, chamomile, what is it good for? A lot of things. Actually, yeah, a lot of things. Um, which actually, real quick, let's go into the elemental correspondences and things mm-hmm. for this. Um, chamomile can be considered masculine, although there have been a few different places where I've seen it. Uh, listed as a feminine herb so I don't know the reason why that I thought it was kind of interesting so I just kind of put it out there for y'all it is also associated with the sun but it is associated with the water element right yeah I thought that was kind of funny because it says it was associated strongly with Leo and I was like interesting yeah um jump it back real quick because you were saying like the feminine kind of thing and I was like, I was thinking maybe because it's like so healing for a lot of stuff. And then I don't know if they do that here too. I think so. But I know for sure in Mexico, um, for uh, that time of the month, that's what ladies drink. And they will brew tea bags and kind of just like put it on their body yeah. and uh, stuff. So, which. Or you can see that maybe that's associated. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that came from an older kind of folklore. I thought this was thing. interesting, but deity wise, um, chamomile is supposed to be associated with Mercury, the god mm-hmm. Mercury, and also the god Ra. Interesting. Yeah, so I don't know if maybe there is a myth that would explain some of the correspondences. I'm not sure. Nothing I found in the but in the stuff when I do. we're talking about like the tea version of chamomile, it's really good for sleep. It's really good for use um, in conjunction with meditation work um, because it's very calming, and it's also known as a purifier in some cases. I think it's because of the sunniness of it. Mm-hmm. I can see that. They do kind of look like tiny daisies. They do. So. They're very pretty. Um, anyway, go ahead. Oh, um, I was reading one of my things. It's apparently really good for the throat chakra. Oh. Yeah, it was like specifically mentioned. I was like, oh, because nothing else I've ever read has really just sprung out and been like, good for this chakra. Like, normally I have to look for, hey, yeah. what do you take for this chakra? This one was like, good for the throat. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna do a little chime. Gotcha. Um. Um. So when we're looking at different spells or different workings, what I have come across is that chamomile is really good for um, use in charm bags, specifically for drawing money or for mm-hmm. wealth spells. Um. It is also very 
heavily associated and very good for specifically health spells. Um, and I've heard that if you sprinkle it around your household, it is good for um, removing negative uh, ne negative spells or curses. Mm -hmm. Right about that too. Um, I was reading that if you didn't want to have like herb floating around, you could just kind of brew it almost and like a, like a spray or a wash. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so yeah, so good for money. Good for I was reading also that it's also good for peace and tranquility kind mm -hmm. of spell bags and that, romance ones. Yeah, probably the, more loving than lusty though. It's probably more I would gentle. Think so. Um, the other thing I thought was funny, and I I am around too many gay people, <laughs> so I don't know if this works both ways, and I would hope it did, but I was reading that if you bathe in chamomile, that it makes you attractive to the opposite gender, oh. but I wonder if it works both ways. Because <laughs> um, I didn't say anything about repelling the same gender, so I was like, maybe it works both ways, and this article just didn't have a both points of view you know what i'm so saying it's just for, for like a, a like a, a attraction mm -hmm. it just says makes you more attractive to the opposite gender. that's no. what it said and i was like oh okay i wonder if it's because it's really good for the skin yeah well maybe yeah maybe kind of freshens you up a bit. a bit so then that's why i was like maybe it's not a gender thing maybe it's just you looking good thing <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't mind looking good <laughs> Um, so that's why I was like, maybe it's good both ways, but specifically it was like, if you're looking for some romance, mm. take a bath. <laughs> um, I mean, that's a really good way to get romance. <laughs> it's a good thing either way, way right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I Ooh. guess if you don't have a bath, because currently I don't have a bath and it's, I don't oh, like shower it. Room, like yeah. Um, I would, tea is gone. my tea is gone also, and I was also sad. <laughs> it's <laughs> very good tea, it's it, apple tea. It's very good From tea. Daiso. But it's yeah, so if any of y'all have one of those, it's actually really good. Tastes it like is apple. Delicious. Um, so I was gonna say, if you don't have a bath, the thing I could think of is actually taking in a tea bag with you and just being like, bloop, and just kind of putting it on your head on the sleeve and just uh, letting it run. <laughs> I have seen people string up. Well, actually, like I've seen it where they will you can for showers you can put different herbs in a like a burlap or a cotton uh sachet mm -hmm. tie it up and then tie it to your shower head so that the pouring water runs through it and kind of make a impromptu tea bag i would suggest using it with either uh, like an un unbleached cotton or a muslin mm -hmm. uh fabric i really wouldn't suggest burlap yeah i wouldn't either honestly um, but yeah, it's supposed to work kind of like a tea bag, especially if you like your showers hot. Yeah, so if you're not that fancy, just grab a tea bag and, you know. Speaking of tea bags and stuff, if you're blonde, it's actually really good for your hair. Oh. I guess it kind of brightens it up some. Which I could see, like, taking a chamomile tea bag and actually, like, brewing yourself, like, a cup or a bowl of tea and taking it into the shower and, like, just, like, like, sponge. Mm-hmm. And just kind of, like, bathing yourself in the tea after. So if anyone's like a blonde and you know you go swimming or the sun or whatever's doing something weird, you might want to do a little chamomile treatment to brighten it up some if you're into that. Actually, I might try that out. <laughs> Those are looking pretty dark considering it's summertime. It's because it's so long. <laughs> it's so long. Yeah, so long. This is very long for me. I'm used to like having almost like a buzz. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? I'm having to break out the clip to like pin my bangs back. Heaven forbid. Yes, um, heaven forbid. Another good thing that I thought, I'd, I'd read that somewhere, but especially if y'all live anywhere where gambling is legal, mm. not legal everywhere, washing your hands in chamomile will bring you luck, apparently. Again, <laughs> we're not doctors and we're not gambling experts, don't take our advice if you don't yes. want to. But, you know, it's not going to hurt you, I guess. <laughs> I would hope it doesn't hurt. <laughs> but yeah, so. Oh. My last tidbit, I don't know what else she's got left, was um, chamomile is really good for your garden. So oh. if you grow it, it'll help other plants. Oh, like nutrition-wise and things mm -hmm. like that? Like, it'll, like, I think it helps. Like, it, like if a plant's kind of weakening down, it'll kind of, like, give them a boost. And I think it also helps keep certain bugs away, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, that's So, really yeah, it's like an actual, it's one of those garden friends, kind of like marigolds, ironically. 
Is Marigold just supposed to plant those next to your tomatoes so your tomatoes won't get eaten? I wonder if that also has something to do with, um, like, the idea of, like, using them for health spells and things like that because le legitimately, like, they help the health of your plants while they're growing so they have that. Mm-hmm. They've got that natural ability. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I thought that was kind of neat because I like... Ooh, I didn't know that. Same. Yeah, Which, I was just... That's really useful if any of y'all have, like, a little window, you know, like a little bitty tiny garden. Mm-hmm. And I've seen people where they do, like, a little tea garden. And they just grow types of tea, so I think I, I think chamomile is like a pretty chill plant as far as I know, as long as you're not doing anything weird to it. Honestly, most teas aren't that hard to grow. Like mint is a weed. I'm sorry, but it's a weed. Like it grows where you don't want it to grow. I mean, so are dandelions. No, no, no. But those those have purpose. And, and they but everyone stay. thinks they're trash. I know, but they stay. Like yeah, they grow everywhere, but they're not like. Okay, so my dad, many moons ago, planted some mint because he was doing my grandma's garden and he decided mint was a good thing because it, it's Vegas, it's the desert, and he needs something that wasn't going to just get up and keel over, right? So he, he gets mint and I think he gets chocolate mint. It's like the mint plant that tastes kind of chocolatey, which is kind of bizarre, and it has purple in it. Oh. Yeah. Different? Yeah, it's its own kind of variation. Huh. Anyway... They overgrew the whole garden. In and Vegas? In Vegas. First of all, so he ripped up a bunch of it trying to like, because he grew, he was growing carrots, celery, he was growing other things in this garden at my grandmother's house. He's like, I'm not going to get rid of all the mint, it's just it's, it's overwhelming all these other plants. So he took them out, you know, tossed them, or I don't know what he did with them, this was many, many years ago. And any little bit that fell out of his bag grew in the brickwork he laid. So they're That's actually kind of terrifying. There I think to this day, like ten years later, I think there's still mint growing in the brickwork at that house because he just can't get rid of it. And now it's in the brickwork. He'd have to rip all the bricks up to get all the root out now. Cause it's just it's there. There was dirt under there when he put the bricks down, so it's viable living ground. So yeah, mint is kinda like a weed. If you grow it, be warned. <laughs> <laughs> make sure to isolate it. Yeah. And you might never get rid of it. Yeah. So make sure you like mint before you grow it. Because you will have it for many, 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 many months. And years. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> the end. The end. <laughs> Horror story over. <laughs> <laughs> the terrors of mint. Pr pretty much. But yeah. So that probably wraps up our stuff. We yeah. had three. This is already a long <laughs> See, I told you three was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to make more of these, either pantry or garden stuff, just to kind of bring more things to light, you know, mm -hmm. things you might be using, things that you might have and not realize, things you might want to grow and just, you might want a magical garden that doesn't look suspicious. I don't know. It's just a lot of different options here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we will catch you the next time. All right. Thank you. Thanks for listening.